Uh, good evening, everybody. And uh, my name is Sushil, Sushil Lystrom. And most people, in fact, the UX is right here. <laughs> uh, I work for the Marlabs and uh, is uh, you know helping them basically to reach out goals for the UX um, market, which is coming up. It's a big time. I know UX is a big buzzword, which is coming up recently. Uh, it's of course the person who came up with this concept. It is it's been there, but it's now becoming more like a, you know more structured. They're more like a science, right? That you can apply in many of the production services that you are developing. So let me, and mine is a very simple, you know, <coughs> presentations, which is uh, primarily to explain you what is the difference between UX and what is UI. And there's a lot of misconception in this, a lot of confusion in this. Is UX a UI or UI a UX? So that's something that I wanted to clarify here, you know. So my presentation is primarily on that, just to give that little, you know, idea of what is it all about. Okay, so <coughs> the UX is basically the acronym of user experience, which was first coined by Dr. Donald Norman in the mid-1990s, a cognitive science uh, researcher while working at Apple. He's retired right now. And of course, uh, you can see his talks in the TED. Uh, many of his uh, talks are mostly primarily on the user experience. And uh, you can go through it. Um, and uh, since then, I think most people have started realizing about this UX. And now it's a big thing. OK, so user experience is the way how a person feels about using a product, system, or services which Leila F. You know, nicely mentioned about many of the aspects of the UX. Um, so can anyone guess how many products and services that you use in a day by an individual? From morning till evening till you go to bed, how many products and services that you use? Can anyone guess? 500. <laughs> yes, of course, when we do a study, right? These are very basic consumables and services that you use uh, you know, starting from A to Z, it's around, around about around 25 to 30 products that you use that goes to your body, right? And mine and everything that you see. The services that you use, telecommunication services, internet services, of course, these are part of the, you know, services that you use. Of course, the products that you see in the, the bathroom, the cleaning stuff and all those things, right? All these things basically when you consider this as a product, how do you design those things so that human can use it? Eventually, this product is going to be used by people, right? So how do you design this product effectively so that it can be used and usable, right? So, <clears throat> okay, the user experience is making things simple, easy, and pleasurable to use. That's the whole idea about it. That's all about how you can make yourself pleasurable in using all these products. Okay, so there's UX equals feeling. So user is a person, experience, using something equals feeling because people have emotions and they have emotional feelings. Okay, so why it is important? Why should we care about user experience? Now this is the major question that most of the people are asking about it. And this was not there before when, because my background, I came from a very um, software, you know, development, hardcore, you know, networking systems oriented kind of a, you know, that background. But then I started practicing it for the last 10 years. Of course, the light last five years was primarily mostly on the UX. So I'll, I kind of basically understand because when we were designing before 10 years, it was very different from now. Because system analysis, we do it. And when we design it, we never really look into the user aspect. It's just about the systems. We design a software, nice looking screens, and buttons and all like that, but you know, is this usable? That aspect was totally underestimated. It was never used. Now, why it is important is because it builds brand loyalty. Because people, if you focus on it, you understand how to basically position yourself. You can do a better value propositions on it. So you can basically drive loyalty out of that. Okay, business done well, it's simple. <coughs> Creates happy customers, 
clients and users. So eventually, yes, if you can make them happy, you're going to be successful in anything that you come up with. So in totality, how does it look like, a UX in totality? So it's a user experience, and you can see, you know, I don't have to explain it again, but the only thing which is like HEI is a human, basically, you know, computer interface. That's the only acronym that I can explain, but pretty much is all about design, usability, accessibility, right, HEI, ergonomics, marketing, system performance, human factors, and utility. So it is now applicable anywhere in terms of the business decisions or uh, any kind of a strategic move that you are, uh, you know, when you make a decision, right, UX is pretty much involved in it. Why is UX overlooked, misunderstood, or even forgotten by many, so many? So UI design is a huge part of UX, okay? It's a part of the UX. In a good majority of cases, the UX designer does in fact design the interface. However, UX is not UI. Okay, this is how people see things, okay? How UX wants to be seen. This is what we want, you know, people to see about UX. You see about the field research, face-to-face -face interviewing, creation of user tests, gathering organizational or uh, statistics, creating personas, and all this stuff, you know, when you list from top to bottom, this is what you're supposed to be in this process. But when you talk about the UX designer, the so-called a big buzz, what going on UX designer these days in the market, right? The moment when they talk about UX designer, they see only this interface design, visual design. So if you leave rest of these things, then you are not basically, you know, involving any UX in it. It's just a design. So it can be a you can be a graphic designer, but if you are not putting your in your design, any of these aspect of emotions or you know uh, persuasions, right? Uh, then you cannot really come up with a good design. So this is what we want them to see. What we want to educate people about this. Okay. So UX is the intangible design of a strategy that brings us to a solution. It's an overall strategic process that aims to create a product or website that customers, users, visitors are drawn to, find easy to use and quickly understand. Okay, through the UX work, we will arrive at the right interface conclusion. So this is basically credit to Dan Wills, and he come up with this idea about the UX, how UX can solve the problem, right? So strategically, you can basically use UX to solve many of the problems. So the growing importance of user experience in the enterprise and the how investment in UX benefits business. So this is how the benefits are. Increase user satisfaction, increase user adoption, lower training cost, increase productivity, increase customer loyalty, decrease in support cost. Now here one of the most important thing is like how do you maintain loyalty? When you talk about websites, for example, I take an example of an e-commerce site. There are tons of websites, you know, which are equally good. They're offering services, you know, in a very competitive rates. So loyalty is just one click away. Okay, how do you basically like have that confidence and the feelings in any of these websites like Amazon.com or you know, sobjila.com, or how do you really stick to one of these websites? Because it's all about, you know, the confidence that you have and the kind of, uh, you know, feelings that you develop along the way when you use some websites. Many of these websites, uh, I think, have designed very nicely these days, so it's very competitive. So one of the elements which is very important here is the, the way how you basically interact with them, how you involve uh, the emotional aspect. I think that counts better and that creates basically the persuasion, trust and uh, of course the emotions. Uh, the human factor uh, basically coined that word which is called the PAD. Persuasion, I think E stands for emotions and T stands for trust. When you have these three components together then you can maintain the loyalty. Okay. So now it's time to think beyond engagement. To relationship. So 
developing a relationship on the website is like how do you do that virtually, right? And that's a major challenge. Okay, engagement is not enough. Because in the marketing terms, people talk about engagement. But then how long you're gonna engage it, right? At some point, you're gonna drop. So then the more than the engagement is relationship. If you develop a relationship, if there's a way that you can communicate properly and develop that emotional, you know, that kind of a trust or something with the, with the, with the, with the company or with the website or the product or services, then of course, you will have a longevity in that. Trends in user experience, cultural shift, uh, the, emergent, uh, the emergence of uh, UX strategy, our role as UX professionals, global collaborations across design and development. Okay, these are some of the design trends. You know, responsive web design, I think most, most of us are now pretty much aware of this design. And uh, I'm very, very active in this because many companies are redesigning their websites. They want to basically write one piece of code and can deploy in multiple devices, right? So the mobile devices, all kind of mobile devices, there are around 200 devices. Okay, so how do you port these applications? You write only one single application, but you can basically port it to all of this. So responsive design basically answered many of those questions. And that's why it's becoming very popular. Uh, for touch screen, yes. The gestures that you use in the touch screens, right? It's a very different kind of an experience. So initially we used to click mouse, right? And we used to type commands. Now you have to touch. In touch, everything happens, right? So this experience is a very different kind of an experience that most people are learning. So multiple platforms, impact of demographic shift and design, moving to the cloud and simplicity. So I'm gonna basically uh, take some of these uh, concepts from the human factors. They are now into uh, this concept called object-oriented UX design, which is pretty much like uh, we learn in the software development, object-oriented software development concept, they're bringing into this UX design because you can work smarter. Because if you have multiple projects, and think about it, if your time and timeline is a big challenge to complete all those things, right? You can use many of these objects, these are reusable objects, and you can use it, repurpose it, and then present it. And there's, you know, it is always predictable, okay? UX objects are the things that user experience designers learn, use for design and create, okay? And uh, this is often we use, if you have a set of libraries of all these user objects, you can pick and choose, you can reference it and develop. They are the user, ex they are the user experience designers subroutines. You know, just like writing a, you know, subroutines, a program uh, to be used for any applications. It's a documented tool-based environment. So what are these UX, UX objects? These are some of the examples. User profiles, scenarios, environments, artifacts, needs and methods, standard projects, specifications, because this is just an example. You can basically add anything, whatever that you come up with, like personas, for example. Uh, if you have some kind of a, you know, there are various things that we develop here, artifacts, um, scenarios. So this all can be in a form of an object, which can be reused. So the next is the cloud UX, uh, and this company is basically trying to, you know, come. The next step is uh, institutionalization of these cloud uh, UX, and it's a buzzword that most people are about talking when you talk about clouds. You know, what does it really do? What is cloud? It's nothing but a services which is more like an ASP. We call it application service provider. So uh, now it is used not only in the applications but in the other services like storage, right? Um, the cloud services which, for example, offered by many of these companies like Amazon or any of these. So uh, cloud is now a big thing and you can centralize many of the stuff um, and then you know, organize it. You can reuse it and channelize it properly. So the benefits is, of course, is mentioned here, building on the foundations of acquired UX knowledge, accessing the power of the cloud to streamline projects, using the cloud to build richer personas, cross-indexing and reference, referencing personas, scenarios, ecosystems, and artifacts in the cloud, improving communications and reports using the cloud. So these are some of the examples, of course, there can be more. Okay, so 
Paul Bryan, he basically uh, you know, said, as user experience mature, it will become more closely aligned with business strategy. So the same priorities that drives the business will guide UX design. So we, stop, we should stop thinking about how to engage customers and instead think about how to relate to people and deepen our, uh, our relationship with them over time. And that means eventually, you know, uh, relationship is the key. Okay, focus on the emotions that drives people instead of relying on the limited lens through which business often see their customers viewing them primarily as uh, market segments. We can no longer rely on all methods of discovering customer needs or rely on numbers alone to capture human needs, motivations, and behaviors. So understanding human needs is bigger than numbers. So number alone is not enough. So we have to understand many of these human behaviors, human psychology. So and that is going to help you much in the UX design process. So user-centered design for usability alone is not enough. It's time to learn how to design for persuasion, emotions, and trust. And this is what this Human Factor International is basically emphasizing more. So the digital asset management user experience, okay, how does UX affect digital asset management? DEM is UX, lacking with the DEM. This is many of the things that we want to discuss, but uh, my time is limited, but um, just want to cover some of the UX aspect. Um, and that's pretty much it. And um, of course, if you have any questions, um, please do so.